Welcome to Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. This is uh, Dave Jones. I'm normally on the other end of the camera, but I'd like to share a personal story that I had from a dear friend in the Superstition Mountains. Now this is not didn't happen to me, but this is a first-hand story that happened to an individual that I've known for many years. His name was Ron. Uh, he grew up in this area. Uh, a lot of people know him from a business, pretty large business he had here in town. I met him from doing video production and commercials for his business. One day he kind of told me in a quiet moment a story that it's kind of always stuck with me, so I'd love to share it, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did. When he was a teenager, his father was working at the, the Barkley Ranch there by where the Peralta trail, trail goes into the, into the superstitions. And, you know, this is back in the 60s, and it was pretty open, and his dad was going to be there for three days, so he asked his dad if he could come with him, and he took his 22 and a little backpack and a sleeping bag, and went up into the, the mountains there uh, north of the, the Barkley Ranch and did a little rabbit hunting and shooting for a few days. And, and as the night started to fall in the Superstition Mountains, uh, Ron made himself a camp and it was getting a little cold. So he set up a little fire and laid out his bedroll and made himself some dinner from one of the rabbits that he'd shot and some of the stuff he had with him. And he's eating and he keeps hearing noise. And you know, it's the Superstition Mountains. It can be scary at night. And he's all there, all there, all by himself. And he keeps hearing noise, like someone's walking up the trail. He was, a, is there a donkey loose around here? You know, which, which is common. And uh, got a little spooked. So eventually he kind of built up the fire a little bit, stuck the rest of his gear in his sleeping bag to make it look like he was sleeping. And then he kind of eased himself back into the brush a little ways with this, with this little hunting 22. And he hears some more noise coming up. And then all of a sudden, jumped into the light was a man just wearing filthy dirty rags and just oh he said you could you could smell him coming once he did that he says but he grabbed a big rock and he was gonna you know basically drop it on where his head would have been in that bedroll and Ron said stop right there and he pointed his his 22 and he's just a kid he pointed his 22 at this guy and he made him sit down and the guy was grumbling and cussing and he made him sit down at the edge of the fire and he held a gun on him all night long. Can you imagine all night long trying to keep somebody that's trying to kill you? And he said that he didn't talk to the guy, he was scared to talk to him, but he was gruff looking and he was making noises and just, just really scary for him. So finally, the sun started coming up just enough where he could see well enough and he started gathering up his equipment and his, held his gun on this guy the whole time and he got the heck out of there. And what Ron confided me, he says, says, I think that guy was one of the crazy Jakes. Now we all know who crazy Jake was from our stories, but other people that were crazy up there were called Jake too, from what I understand. But he called him one of the crazy Jakes. And Ron wasn't so anxious to go hunting up there in the mountains by himself anymore. So there you go, another mystery of the Superstition Mountains. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.